Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. Hey, Emily. What do foam explosions, bug eating, and magic have in common? I don't know what. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but they sure are cool to watch. Sounds like it. Join us as we revisit with some of our zaniest zone guests. You're not alone. You're in the zone. So hang up the phone. And get in the zone. Get in the zone, the Friday zone. You're in the zone, the Friday zone. Hi everyone and welcome back into The Zone. You know the most exciting times I've had here in The Zone are with some of our zaniest guests. Uh, you mean like Dr. Kaboom who showed us an explosive chemical reaction? Or Stacy from The Wonder Lab who always has an awesome experiment. Uh, uh, Taylor, what about our bug expert Tom Turpin? Oh no. Oh yes. Tom gave Taylor and I a lesson about our creepy crawly friends. Oh. Let's just say that he really exposed us to mm. new things. Check it out in this Friday Zone flashback. Welcome, Tom. Thanks Hi, for coming Emily. to The Zone. Nice so, to meet you, Tom. Hi, Taylor. So now, Tom, tell us a little, about, little bit about what you do at Purdue. Well, I'm an entomologist. I am a scientist who studies insects. Okay. But sometimes people think an entomologist also studies other arthropods like spiders and ticks and mites. So we kind of deal with all of the creepy crawlies. Ah, Lucky gotcha. you. Cool. So now, if we are not afraid of bugs and we like them, how do we improve our relationships or attitudes towards them? Well, certainly you can try to learn more about them and what their roles in nature uh, may be, but also overcoming a fear of insects is sometimes handling insects. Ooh. I have brought along a few creatures have for us you? to have handle. Have you really? <laughs> and I thought that you two would be the perfect folks to do some handling. We sure so we're going to start with Emily. Okay. okay. And yeah, Emily, Great. I've brought along uh, a little creature here called a tomato hornworm caterpillar. He is and you very ask pretty. us if we name them. This one's called peppermint. Peppermint. because it looks like a peppermint color. Look at this. Now out in the wild they wouldn't look that way. They'd be green so they'd blend in with their environment. Right, right. But this one is missing something in its diet so it has more of this sea foam color. It's very oh, pretty. Okay. It kind of matches uh, my eyes. Oh, oh yeah. matches your shirt a little Maybe. bit there too. Get that a little closer to your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That, no. That's the reason I chose Emily, not Taylor, to hold that because of the matching <laughs> things. We, we try to be eye. color coordinated yeah. here, you know, Perfect. so that. To, but I wanted to give Taylor a chance. Are you ready? I'm ready. I wanted Let's to give you it. a chance. I figured that you ought to hold something that would be a little more challenging okay. than to just to match right. your eyes. So I want you to hold a Madagascar hissing cockroach. All right. <laughs> uh, these he matches your shirt. The Thank largest you. cockroaches in the world by weight from the Isle of Madagascar. Don't worry about them. They're not going to bite you. They're nature's recyclers. Make pretty good pets. And really? In fact, you can get a lot so, of free meals if you take them to a restaurant and release them at the appropriate <laughs> yeah. time. Where do they get the hissing part of their name from? Well, they actually make a hissing sound like a snake if they are, uh, let's say, disturbed by uh -huh. a predator. They'll experience Bell air out of their spiracles and make a hissing sound, wow. so they're called hissing cockroaches. Huh, pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, it's very pretty. <laughs> uh, and there are a lot of cockroaches in the world. Right, you know, right. There are several, several thousand species, 3,000 or so. Only five or six of them have moved into our homes and caused yeah. problems. But we don't like them because they are aggressive enough to try to live with us. Right. And, and that means that most people try to get rid of exactly. them. But, but they don't cause a lot of problems except maybe an allergic reaction, mm -hmm. okay. uh, like an asthmatic reaction. Hmm. So there, there are two things. Now we have a immature a hornworm caterpillar and the adult here insect, uh, we call it cockroach. So I'm going to give Emily a chance then to hold uh, one other thing. If you want to get rid of peppermint, I'll put I her over I here. Will. Yeah, there you go. So. This is not an insect, Emily, but this is kind of an ancestral insect. This is what we call a giant <laughs> tropical 
millipede. I think, Tom, uh, I'm going to let you hold him. No, I don't think you are, oh. Emily. <laughs> I, I think what we're going to do, Emily, put your hand over here. You are going to hold a giant <laughs> tropical <laughs> millipede. Now, Emily, you are... My attitude is getting better because I could not say you. that I would ever have done this before. No, you can't. But think of it as, as getting a 320 <laughs> leg massage right now as she starts crawling across your hand. So I that am. Can, and these are just like the cockroaches that Taylor has in his hand in that they're nature's recyclers. Mm -hmm. They feed on plant material that falls off the trees yes. out in the uh, out in the the tropical forest where uh -huh. they live. So play a very important ecological role and don't cause any harm to humans except maybe entomophobia. So I know we're running out of time, but you have one more, one more thing. creepy crawly. And, oh yeah, one more creepy crawly to kind of get us started today. Hang on to that millipede because because Taylor right. is what actually you got for me, going to hold Woo! <laughs> a tarantula all, right. uh, oh, uh, all, all the way from South America, a Chilean rose tarantula. Don't make a sound like a cricket because that's their prey item and, and they'll normally only bite if they think you're a food item. So if you category. sit there very gently, put your other hand over there, let her crawl right onto that hand. As See? long as we treat them very, very kindly, cool. they'll be kind well, Tom, to us. All right, we want to say so thank you so much for changing our attitudes because I do agree, it's how you approach them first. Exactly. So. Now you know, holding a tarantula isn't as scary as you think, but I did learn something. It was it was like getting webbing all over me and I asked him what that meant, and it meant she was marking her territory. Oh really? Yeah. Well I have to let you know that I was not going to hold that millipede. When I told Tom that I wasn't <laughs> gonna hold it, I was not going to, but I'm definitely glad that he made me do that. Well, the fun didn't stop there with our friendly entomologist. You bet it didn't. Tom let us explore a whole other side of cuisine and it wasn't the easiest to chew. Because it was still moving. Just take another look and you'll see what we mean. Your favorite food might be pasta or pizza, but bugs? All kinds of bugs can be a part of a balanced diet. And believe it or not, not all people around the world incorporate insects into their daily menu. And Taylor and I wanted to jump on board. So Tom is going to show us some hopefully delicious treats in our hands-on zone. Welcome back, Tom. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be able to prepare an insect treat for you. So what are, what, are, what are we eating here? Well, we're actually going to eat some mealworms, and I'm going to toss the mealworms into the skillet here. We're okay. going to saute them. Huh. You call them mealworms not because you and I are going to make a meal out of them, uh -huh. but because they feed on grain meal. Ah, oh, okay. look, at look at that. Right. that they're just popping and oh, sizzling all this over the place. They just crackle. popped out. Yeah, popped out of there. That's from the frying pan into the fire. Uh, <laughs> Do you, how many of you want you want them rare or do you want them uh, uh, well, medium well? Well, mealworms medium rare. Medium, medium rare. rare. Well, we'll do what that. Well done. Uh, well done. We'll do that too. I, I'm sorry. Uh, as a chef in a fine restaurant, I I, know, I can't guarantee them. Okay. I don't know how fine of a restaurant he's working in, right? Hey, you be uh, careful. You don't talk about that hat. But uh, <laughs> you know, if they're well done, I, I have to refer to them as crispy critters, if you know <laughs> what I mean. So crispy critters. All right. So what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna. Cook them up here just about right today. Right. We got some medium. They're actually in a in a uh, kind of a health food uh, sauce here. Okay. So if you're worried about lard, that's not going to be a problem. Good. I need so, to watch my lard. Load. Oh, you got to watch yeah. your lard so that. Yeah. Now, now, I was going to say, Tom. Now, bugs. These mealworms. They are high in protein, right? Very high in protein. In fact, the protein content is higher than in most of the protein foods we eat. All of it isn't digestible, as some of it is in the chitin, which is more like a fiber. Mm -hmm. So we have a health food item here. It's not only high in vitamins, uh, it is low in fat, it's high in protein, it's high in fiber. I mean, you can't go wrong by eating insects. I so, should throw some mealworms into my protein shakes after the gym. That Let's would be see. great. That would help right. out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to actually put them out here to get rid of a little bit of the uh, <laughs> margarine so you can taste them the oh, real fantastic. flavor of the I really the want to get these uh, mealworm juices. Huh. I want you to taste this, so we're going to give uh -huh. you uh, a mealworm to taste. Uh, you know, we're eating them as a finger food today, okay. so you're just going to reach right out there and grab a mealworm. You can All eat them right. oh. head first or tail first. How do I grab this? I well, I don't think very I carefully, it. yeah. Don't play with your food. I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Don't you're play with your food. Nervous. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Ha a little greasy oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not nervous anymore. No, you're not nervous. Get that on there. Oh, that's good. Crispy now, wait a minute. You, you got them? Got them. All right, now, wait a minute. I'm going head Come on, let's go. Let's go. Look at Tom. Oh. Mmm. Oh, you know what? It's like a Funyun. Wow, well, yeah. yeah. It tastes like a Funyun. This would be great 
Uh, for I'm the IU Purdue basketball game, you could eat them at halftime. Oh yes, see, and we can come together. Everybody would love these. Oh yeah, you you market them all. Go, ahead, go ahead, help yourself. They're hard to get. Okay. Tom Turpin makes the best yeah, mealworms. Yeah, the very in town. best sautéed mealworms right here in Bloomington. Can't believe I just ate a mealworm. No, no, you so, um, eating eaten three or four of them. So, uh, can you eat these uh, live? Oh sure. You know, all the uh, insect eaters in the world actually consume insects live: the birds, the snakes, uh, the other uh, amphibians. So yeah, you can grab a mealworm. You get the full-bodied flavor <laughs> of uh, these if you eat them alive. You uh, do. Yeah, uh, here I'll show you. Here, put your hand out here. Here, Good. here's some of them. <laughs> and, this uh, is this yeah. is all tailored this time. Wait, wait, oh, it's wait, all tailored. Wait. Well, yeah. all right, Taylor, no, Tom, here, you and I at the same time. Here we go. Well, we're going to do these. Well, you need to chew them to get the full-bodied flavor. So everybody <laughs> okay. see that? Are you see ready? You're not joking. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Enjoy. How are they? They are something I've never tried before. Let me tell you, this is. Not bad, huh? Not too so you bad, get the Tom. full flavor of that. You the know? juices are starting to kind of, you know, secrete in my mouth. Yeah, and I, uh, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Tom, you told us a little earlier that the U.S. is kind of one of the only places that really bugs are not part of our menu, right? Well, Europe and the United States, almost anywhere else in the world, people actually think that insects are a delicacy. Mm. And so they go out and try to get a big batch of them and have a special occasion on birthdays or holidays, you know, and have a, a few insects that they can eat. So only in North America and Europe do we sort of say, I don't think I'll be having any insects for supper tonight. Well, we had some insects today for our own little snack. So yeah, thanks yeah, for letting us know. Not. Maybe you're starting a trend. Well, it could be. In fact, uh, they keep very well. If you order these mealworms, you can put them in the refrigerator. So every time you want to have mealworms for a snack, you can go in and have fresh mealworms, toss them in the old uh, saute skillet, and you're ready to go. So, Taylor, that was the first time you'd eaten a live mealworm. Have you eaten one since? No. You haven't, why? And I don't plan on it because I'm still picking them out of my teeth. <laughs> That's so gross. So what was it like to eat a live mealworm? Well, it was, he handed me a handful and I thought he was gonna give me one. And so we just did it and then I could just feel them like wiggling in my mouth and it was just, I'm glad you did it and not me. It was me. an experience. Well, it was really interesting to learn <laughs> that many cultures throughout the world eat bugs as a delicacy. I think I'll be sticking with burgers and fries. I don't blame you. Well, one of my favorite guests always had something special up his sleeve. Sit back and be amazed by the sleight of hand of the great Giordini. Not all jobs fall into the traditional categories, so we wanted to show you that it is okay to think outside of the box. Joining us here in the zone is the only person in the United States to major in magic. I present to you the great Giordini. Thank you for being here with us today. It's good to be here. I know that Savannah and Lucas and I are all excited to see <clears throat> the special tricks that you have. So I know you have one ready right now. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right. I brought here with me a poker chip. I got it in uh, Las Vegas. What's going to happen with this poker chip is we're going to make it travel through time and space. Watch closely through time and space. No reaction from the audience. I'll tell you what, we'll do it again. Watch closely and we'll do it in slow motion. You can see it go in slow motion. Still no reaction. I'll tell you what, this time we'll do it in reverse, if I move my hands, you can actually see the poker chip go up, just like that. Savannah, you look amazed. Is that unreal? Go ahead no, and I really that. am. You really are? Uh -huh. So can you try, can you do it? See if you can do it. I it's magic, it's magic. Seriously, I it really no is. Now, Lucas, you seem kind of skeptical. Do you have any, do you have a question about that? Do you have anything? Nothing? You just want to see another trick? He has one. Okay. You ready? I have here some coins that I brought with me. Have you ever Ooh. seen these coins before? I didn't. These are uh, these are half dollars. Go ahead, check oh. one out. You can look at it. I've you can got, look at one too. I've got, I they're think, worth. I've got like five of these. You've got <gasps> some of these at home? Ooh. Yeah, these are they're pretty neat. They're really big. This is uh, John F. Kennedy. Hmm. These are worth two quarters, half a dollar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make the coins travel from my left hand over here to my right hand over here. It's gonna be pretty fun. Watch, it's gonna happen one at a time through midair, just like that. How many coins do you see over here? Four. How many coins do you see over here? Four. Watch closely, the first one. One, two, and it travels just like this, through midair, from hand to hand. Pretty amazing, right? Uh, no, that's not magic. We it's not magic? That. Okay, okay, that was, that was a little slow. We'll do it again. How many coins do you see over here? Four. And how many coins do you see over here? Zero. Watch, you can actually see it go. Just like that. And you get one, two, three, and the first coin jumps. Did you see it go? No. You didn't? I'll tell Did you, we'll you do see it again. It? No, you didn't? Yay! 
We'll do it again. Watch the first one. We'll do the first one in super slow motion this time. You can right. see the first one go. There's four. Four. I the first four. one Did goes in slow four? motion. Savannah, do you see four? Yeah. Okay. Just like this, in slow motion. And the coin goes from left to right in slow motion. Now I'll speed it up a little bit more. How many coins are over there? Three. And just the one over there, right? Yeah. Watch the next one go. See it go and you can actually hear it land. And you get two and two. What? Pretty cool. I'll tell you what, go ahead, hold your hand out for me if you would. We've got one, two coins right there, two left to go. Watch, we'll start with the one on the right and then we'll go to the one on the left. Two coins over here and two coins over here. Watch, one, two, you can actually see this one go. And you get one, two, three coins over here and one coin over here. Now Savannah, now, you were you watching would, that one the whole time, weren't you? Place your hand, place your right hand out, Savannah. I'm gonna give you the last coins over here. We have one, two, three coins. Now watch the last one, this is the most important. I'm gonna place this in your hand just like this. I want you to reach over with your other hand and square the coins up in your hand and then pick up the top coin and hand it to me. And when you do that, close your hand. Very good, turn it over so nothing can get inside. Watch the last coin just like this. It's gonna go from, not from my hand to my hand, but from my hand to your hand. Did you feel anything at all? Open your hand, how many coins do you have? All, one, two, three, four coins, just like that. You can see them all in your hand, pretty cool. So Taylor, mm -hmm. I learned a really neat trick from the great Dordini cool. that you guys at home can actually try too. Do you want to see what it is? Yeah, definitely. All right. So first off, I'm going to take this pepper. Okay. And we just have a container filled with water. And I'm just going to sprinkle some pepper on the surface of the water to start our little trick mm. out. Pepper. All right. So the entire surface of this is covered almost, mm -hmm. almost. Pepper. I would say about right there is good. Mm. You can see through it, but it's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty packed. All right. So basically, this is about the magic touch, and okay. I want to see if you have that. So I'm just going to ask you to stick your finger in the water and Okey see dokey. if something happens. All right, magic touch. Here we go. Hmm. <gasps> Not a whole lot happened. No, you want me to try? I, I've heard I have the magic touch. Okay. Watch. Whoa! Oh, did you see that? How'd that work? All right. So here's the trick actually is called dish soap. Now, when your friend is not looking, place a drop of dish soap on your finger. Now, what you actually see is an illusion that looks like you have the magic touch. What you see is the soap destroying the surface tension of the water. See now, surface tension is actually the attraction between molecules of water on the surface. So it's really simple to just put the soap on and it breaks the surface once you put the soap Who in there. Who knew magic was so scientific? Exactly, and you can actually try it at home. It's really simple. Well, you know, one of my favorite guests is Stacy Radford Vincent from the Wonder Lab. Now, she always has great experiments for us to try here in the studio. Mm -hmm. The first experiment that I ever did with Stacy was definitely the coolest, or should I say, the <laughs> hottest. Check it out in this Friday's own flashback. So we're going to be doing some experiments today with air. Okay. Um, and the first thing to know about air is that it's matter. So just like solids and liquids, it's one of the states of matter. Do you know what the other state of matter is? Uh, I'm going to go with a gas. Very good. I All right. So right. gases are matter, and they're made up of different, the air around us is made up of different chemicals. So oxygen, uh, helium, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, um, all of those things are around us. And so we're going to use those things today for a chemical reaction. Okay, great. Um, and namely, burning things. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to start a fire in this bottle, and a fire needs oxygen in order okay. to burn. And so we're going to put a flammable liquid into our bottle. Okay, and, and what flammable liquid do we have here today? This is called methanol. Uh, it's a type of alcohol. It's very, very flammable. Uh -huh. So we are going to wear safety goggles. We're okay. going to be real careful with what we're doing today. Uh, we're going to put this into the bottle and we're actually going to light the inside of the bottle on fire. When Ooh. we do that, it's going to burn up all the oxygen inside, uh -huh. create kind of a vacuum uh -huh. inside where there's less air. So more air is going to rush in and as it does that, the oxygen is going to burn. You're going to see that flame shoot up. So out it's kind of like the if you were in a room and there was a fire and you opened the door, and then the flames were to shoot out. Exactly. Okay. So that's called a backdraft. So you're going to okay. see exactly why you should never do that. Exactly. So we're going to pour a little bit of this into our bottle. 
So is there a reason why methanol is green? Is it always green like this? It is not. This is actually left over from some other experiments that oh, we do okay. at the museum. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're just using that. I'm going to set it down here since cool. it is flammable. Uh, do you want to yeah, turn that sure. around and try and coat it? Should try and get, get the everywhere. whole bottle. Just try not to uh, get it spill it out. out the top. Yep, get it all the way up to the top. Then we're going to pour out the extra. We don't want too much fire. Okay, okay. Just do this a few times. Yep. So you feel like it's pretty good and coated. I think we're pretty good. Okay. So now we're taking out the remains yep. of the methanol. We don't want too big of an explosion. Exactly. All right. So if you can move that out of the way and go ahead and put on those safety goggles. Yes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lower the lights so we can see this a little bit better. All right. So we are expecting a loud noise. I'm a assuming. pretty loud okay. noise. All right. This is exciting. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. That was not, look, it's still going. Is it going to stop? What are, it, it will stop. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. I kind of want to do that again. <laughs> did that ever stop? It did eventually, but you know, I, I guarantee you if I did that experiment again, all the hair on my face would be totally gone. <laughs> it probably would be. Stacy always has the most exciting experiments that comes in, and mm -hmm. honestly, that explosion was huge. Oh, I know. It was wonderful. Well, I think our zanious guest had to be Dr. Kaboom. Mm. He showed us many exciting experiments, and we discovered some interesting scientific facts. My favorite experiment was his lesson on chemical reactions. You will have to see this one for yourself, so take a look. Now what we're going to do is work with something what we call a chemical reaction. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, you have studied chemistry? Yes. 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 A yeah. couple times. Yeah. A couple yeah. times, yeah, yeah. Advanced chemistry, good. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, what we're going to do is make the chemical reaction. We are going to uh, mix some substances together. When they mix together, they will change in such a way that uh, at least one of the substances will become something completely different. It will change on what we call a molecular level, and we cannot go backwards in the process. So, mm -hmm. oh, I will wow. show you with what we have over here, the giant test tube. I will need a volunteer. I'll do it. Emily? Yeah, I'm Emily will do it. Yeah, I will get the supplies. Now, Emily, we are now, what we're going to do is going to take turns mixing the chemicals. I will pour one, you will pour one, I will pour one, you understand taking turns, understand. yeah? So, <laughs> you're ready? I'm ready. You're ready? Yeah. yeah. We are not yet ready. Oh. Why? Because we are not yet practicing safe science. Safety first, yeah. you're right. Yeah, Emily. I have the goggles of safety. You do not have the goggles <laughs> I do of not. safety. I need some. You, you need must wear the goggles of safety. <gasps> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're on. I have the gloves of safety. You do not have the gloves of safety. You must wear have some? the gloves of safety. I feel like a superhero. Yeah, they are also known as the gloves of toilet bowl cleaning. <laughs> Whatever keeps me safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in every way, yeah. Now, I have the lab coat of safety. You do not have the lab coat of safety. But I have clothes of safety. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> now, the first chemical we have here, my friends, is a chemical called hydrogen peroxide. Ooh. Yeah, now, many of you have this in your homes. It comes in a brown bottle, and if you have a cut or a scrape, perhaps your uh, mother or papa pours on the skin and it bubbles up to clean the germs, yeah? Right. Now, what I put in here, hydrogen peroxide, is different mm. from your hydrogen peroxide at home. What you have at home is what we call 3%. It is watered mm. down, it's diluted. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. This means it is three parts hydrogen peroxide, mm. it is 97 parts water. This is 10 times more powerful. It is 30%. It would burn your skin on contact. Ooh. Reason for the gloves. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And this is why I handle this dangerous chemical. Lab coat, so you get to pour it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will give you the next dangerous chemical. Okay. Hands out. I bring the chemical to you. Okay. The next dangerous chemical. Yeah. Soap. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know, I know, we laugh, but you get this in the eyes, you cry like German baby. <laughs> Just because know. we know what it is, just because we are familiar, does not mean we do not practice the safe science. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So my friends, what you're going to do is carefully walk over and pour that into the top. All right, just a little? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Flip the lid. This is your practice run for the truly dangerous chemical i give you in a moment. A little more squeeze, a little bit more. Perfect. Way. Yeah. Okay. You close the lid, you step back, Still hand away me the from container. My face. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you the catalyst. This is the chemical that makes the chemical reaction happen. Mm -hmm. 
Now, does uh, any one of you know the chemical formula for water? H2O. Sure. H2O, yeah. Mm -hmm. This means it is made of water is made of two, what we call elements. Two parts, hydrogen stuck together with one part, oxygen. Do you know the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide? I don't think so. Yeah. H2, I don't know, peroxide. You're on the right <laughs> way though, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is H2O2. Uh, H2O2. Two parts hydrogen stuck together with two parts oxygen. Let my chemistry teacher down. Yeah, that's all right, that's all right. We are here to learn together. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so basically hydrogen peroxide is water with a lot more oxygen shoved inside. Mm -hmm. This chemical I'm going to give you, the catalyst, is going to release all of the oxygen from the liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so, guys. hands out, I bring the chemical to you. Now, my dear, mm -hmm. I have placed the chemical in your hands. Yeah. You must understand, this chemical is what we call a volatile chemical. Okay. Do not jiggle the chemical. <laughs> Very solid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's liquid, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I step back, so mm -hmm. I am safe. You're back. Go. Slow down! Stop! <laughs> slow down, you move too fast, you're jiggling the chemical, my dear. Stop, slower. Slow, <laughs> Emily. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, am Emily, so Emily, Emily, Emily. We don't have all day. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we pour in all at once, just pour it in. All dump, of it. dump, dump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You step back. You have made the chemical reaction. <laughs> oh, it's already oh going. my wow. gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh the my. oxygen is escaping. It is being trapped by the bubbles, filling up the tube oh. almost to the line of safety. Oh, oh. 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 my goodness. <laughs> it looks like a volcano of bubbles. Yeah. A little bit and more. soapy bubbles. Emily? Yeah? Yeah? I said no jiggling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, my dear, you have done perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, I do this to demonstrate why in science we always practice to save science. Even when we think we know what is going to happen, even when we have done something a hundred times, it's mm -hmm. always possible the unexpected may occur. Mm -hmm. So we always practice safe science, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that was fascinating, no, Emily? <laughs> Dr. Kaboom, seriously, <laughs> he really did have the funnest experience. Well, what was your most favorite segment we looked at today? Uh, honestly, I'd have to say Tom Turpin. Oh, I know. You know, one thing I learned from him was eating bugs will certainly put a little bit of hair on your face. Uh, or some scales on your body. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. Today, we had a chance to learn incredibly simple magic trick, witness a couple of amazing experiments, and grow closer to some creepy, crawly friends. <laughs> Remember, if you really enjoyed the guests on our show and you'd like to suggest a guest of your own, tell us about it. Don't forget to write to us at www.fridayzone.org. Download this or other episodes of The Friday Zone for free on iTunes. And remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We will see you right here again next week. Bye-bye. All right. Let's do something great. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you.